All right, number 29 on the Robinson Curriculum book list is Uncle Remus. Now, this is one of those books that has a little bit of controversy surrounding it. So before I get to the controversial part, let me just tell you what the book is about and who wrote it. It was written by Joel Chandler Harris, and this falls under the category of the RC book list of social studies and literature. Now, Uncle Remus is the fictional title character and narrator of a collection of African-American folk tales compiled and adapted and published in book form in 1881. He was born in Eaton, Eatonton, Georgia, where he served as an apprentice on a plantation during his teenage years. So this is where he heard these stories. Harris spent most of his adult life in Atlanta after that, working as an associate editor at the Atlanta Constitution. Now, Harris led two professional lives. As the editor and journalist known as Joe Harris, he supported a vision of the New South with the editor Henry W. Grady, which stressed regional and racial reconciliation after the Reconstruction era. As Joel Chandler Harris, fiction writer, that's the other role, and folklorist, he wrote many ver like B-R-E-R -E is meant to be brother, like Burr Rabbit, I'm not going to say it right, stories from the African-American oral tradition and helped revolutionize literature in the process. So he's hearing these stories. These are stories traditionally passed down in the African-American community, and he turned them into a book series. Now, what exactly is this series about? Uncle Remus is a collection of animal stories, songs, just oral stories passed down, collected from Southern Black Americans. Now, many of these stories are didactic. What that means is it's just like Aesop's fables or Jean de La Fontaine's stories. Uncle Remus is a kindly old freed man who serves as a storytelling device, passing on these tales like the traditional African griot to children gathered around him. That word griot means like a storyteller. There was always one in the community, you know, passing down these stories. Now, these stories are written in an I dialect devised by Harris to represent a deep South Black dialect. So I don't know if maybe that's off-putting to some people. You can see it here at the top of the screen. You know, this is saying like, you can hide the fire, but what you're going to do with smoke, you know, but it's written in this way. And I know some parents and their kids have a hard time reading it. And this is why they might choose an audio version for this book. Um, you know, I consider it the same as when reading The Secret Garden and it has all that Yorkshire. <laughs> I can't pronounce that either. I try my best to just read it as it is. Um, it could be a little bit challenging. Now, B-R-E-R, -E which is brother, you know, Brother Rabbit is the main character of the stories, a character prone to tricks and troublemaking who is often opposed by Brother Fox and Brother Bear. Now, Mary Harris worked as a seamstress and helped neighbors with their gardening to support herself and her son. She was an avid reader and instilled in her son a love of language. He said, my desire to write, to give expression to my thoughts, grew out of hearing my mother read The Vicar of Wakefield, which is also a book on the RC book list. Now, on July 3rd, 1908, Joel Chandler Harris died of acute nefer nefertes, that's a cirrhosis of the liver complication, Uncle Remus, this was the quote in the paper, Uncle Remus cannot die. Joel Chandler Harris has departed this life at the age of 60, but his best creation, Uncle Remus, with his fund of folklore, will live in literature. So it's like his legacy. Now let's talk about some of the things that make it a little controversial with parents. Now, white critics were mad at the time when this came out, that he was basically a secretary for local blacks and that his work did not represent white Georgia, but black Georgia. So he really got it from all angles. And we're gonna talk about all those angles. On one hand, you have white critics who are saying, you just were their secretary. You just wrote down their stories. This is not representative of you. I guess, you know, the whole cultural appropriation or whatever that is, you know, they're calling him out on that. This is not you, this is them, and you're the messenger, you're the secretary. Now, Keith Cartwright, however, asserts, Harris might arguably be called the greatest single authorial force behind the literary development of African-American folk matter and manner. So some people praised him. 
Now, in more recent times, in 1981, the writer Alice Walker, who is famous and she wrote the novel The Color Purple, accused Harris of stealing a good part of her heritage in a searing essay called Uncle Remus, No Friend of Mine. Now, I read that essay and I understand where she's coming from. She was upset that these stories that are part of her community, her culture, were passed down in this very commercialized way. And then when Disney picked it up, that really did not sit well with, I don't know if it was the whole community, but you know, at least her, her perspective, her family. And even when they started creating movies and the whole town would go and watch these movies, you would see the white families in the white preferred section and the black families in the black section. So you could see how that could uh, build up some kind of, I don't want to say bitterness, but it's very off-putting resentment that they're watching these African-American you know, folklore tales and they're having to sit in, in the black section while the white families are um, up front. So that became so off-putting to, I think, a lot of people that it seems like they just stopped passing down these stories. I mean, I don't know. Please, let's have a discussion in the comments below. Let's have an honest, intelligent conversation. Um, I think we can all be civil about this. And I'd like to know, what are your thoughts? Is this off-putting to you? Or do you think it was a great thing to pass these down in book format? Because honestly, are they really being passed down anymore today? Was that the reason why they stopped being orally passed down or there are other factors? Uh, because recently I remember even my pastor had asked, and we have a very diverse, large congregation and he uh, referenced something to one of the books and he said, you know, raise your hand, did anybody read Uncle Remus growing up? And nobody raised their hand. Nobody knew what he was, the, the reference he was talking about. So obviously there are stories that are no, it doesn't seem like they're being passed down. Correct me if I'm wrong. If they are being passed down still orally in that traditional way, I'd love to hear about it. Let me know in the comments below. But it seems like a lot of people from that community, they don't know about these stories, you know, uh, today. Now, Julius Lester, who is a black folklorist and university professor, he sees the Uncle Remus stories as important records of black folklore. He wrote, and quote, there are no inaccuracies in Harris' characterization of Uncle Remus. Even the most cursory reading of the slave narratives collected by the Federal Writers Project of the 1930s reveals that there were many slaves who fit the Uncle Remus mold. So the it's not inaccurate. He really did, he was very careful. He did a great job at passing, preserving and passing down these stories. But I understand how at that time, it could be off-putting to an audience, seeing their culture, you know, just like Native Americans today probably don't like seeing Native American uh, Halloween costumes or what have you, you know, um, I get it. Now, more recently, the scholars, Henry Louis Gates Jr. and Maria Tadar debated whether to include Uncle Remus stories in their 2017 volume, The Annotated African American Folk Tales. Ultimately, they decided on inclusion along with a detailed preface on the critical issues surrounding Harris, race, and again, that word that we see now all the time, cultural appropriation. So I have a couple of the books here. This is Uncle Remus, His Songs and His Sayings. Obviously a reprint. These are reprints. I did buy an original one time on eBay, but it was falling apart. And here we have the complete tales of Uncle Remus. So you can find lots of quality reprints. Yes, I understand it could be a little difficult to read, um, you know, but that's, that's why a lot of parents choose to do an audio version when it comes to this book. And yes, I even know, you know, some parents decide to skip it. I get it. I understand. But what are your thoughts on that? Is it better that to lose that information if it's not passed down or to preserve it forever in history? Would it have been better if an African American published it? But what if you know, they didn't have that opportunity to publish it. Would you rather have it published by a white man or not at all? These are all questions that I'm wondering. And if you'd like to chime in, please do so in the comments down below. Let's have a conversation about it. But that is how I can best sum up for you and wrap up Uncle Remus. 
why it's on the list because obviously it's a very important book in history um today yes there's mixed opinions on it but even when people struggle with it like we talked about they'll still include it in popular works and series and catalogs and things like that now just my thoughts personally i'm a big fan of storytelling uh, i don't have that much to tell my children i feel like but i'm trying to think of just little stories from me growing up, my husband does the same of him growing up, funny stories, serious stories. We try to share that and pass them down. And our kids always, even though they've heard them so many times, they still like, mom, please tell us that story of this and this, or dad, tell us your story again. Kids love hearing stories and they wanna hear them again and again. It anchors them, it's part of their childhood, that chain in history, that generational chain. So these stories from Uncle Remus, I feel like they are very important and they should be passed down. Are we passing them down today orally? You know, fine, not my community, but the original community it came from, are they passing those stories down? It looks to me, and maybe I'm wrong, that they're not being passed down. So at least they're preserved in this book format. Um, is it unfortunate when it gets all commercialized and did Disney adapts it, you know? Well, same thing with Pinocchio as well, you know? It is what it is. Um, it brings more uh, brings more of an audience to it, and then hopefully they'll go, oh, let me read the original, right? So that's why I believe it's on the list. It does have historical value. It is very important to pass down these stories, no matter who you are, what the color of your skin is. I think there's value in listening to these stories, and I'm glad that they were preserved for us. With that being said, it's not lost on me, though, how it could be off-putting to generations in the past, but do they have to be off-putting to generations today? That's the question. So I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments.